It, 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 I, Natai. <laughs> yes. Is hearing <laughs> what, these, what was it, that? What was that noise? I, I don't know he what that farted. noise was. That's that's what it was. I literally had a stroke as I was trying to put my words together. But is hearing Must be the me say the enemy word? Stand. Is hearing me say the word now like a Pavlovian burp response for you? It's it's. It, I'm just now testing for like how many times like does it will it take for you not to laugh whenever I I burp because you've been laughing at it. Every single time I burp, I'm like, there's no fucking way it's still funny to him. He's like chuckling in the background. Like, there's no way it's still funny. Dude, you know my sense of humor is shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's still like every single time. Like, you you see it coming. There's no fucking way you don't. Well, at this and point, still, I've gotten it's so like, used to I'm, it I'm like, I'm like, this time he won't laugh. And I'm like, all right, I'll burp. And I just, every single time I hear the... <laughs> at, <laughs> at this point, I might actually laugh more if you didn't do it because I wouldn't be expecting it. You'll never see it coming. <laughs> yeah. everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark's movie reviews, a spoiler-free discussion detailing the good, the bad, and the downright ridiculous of anime movies. We're really going to be testing that one today. I'm your host, Alex, <laughs> but you can call me Senpai, and tonight I am joined by our poser extraordinaire, Natai. You know, ever since the show hasn't been on, there were no intro bits that are that are related to nipples. Have you thought That's... of that? Have you ever thought about that? Because just only now, I was like, wait, there was no nipple well, joke ever since the show, like, took a break. Shinoda's got to pick up the slack. <laughs> oh, well, that's uh, the stage for him. All right, and we also have our Midsummer Night's Fever Dream, because I had to add that in there. Shinoda, I'm sorry. Natai, why'd you make us watch this movie? I fucking hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I was curious. I was curious. Your that's curiosity is shit taste. Yeah. I never claimed this movie was good, bro. I just said, well, let's give it a shot. I like. I'd is, like to point this out what that this is about this movie is it's a is a chance to check out movies we still haven't gotten a chance to watch, or we want to just rewatch. You know. So. I'd like to point out that when I first saw that he was going to recommend fireworks for us to watch, my response was, and I quote, "Oof." <laughs> you knew nothing about this movie going in, bro. I I did too because I saw it in fucking theaters when it came out in the time. Wait, you watched this? This is the, the second time for you viewing. This is my second viewing of this movie. <laughs> I oh, didn't know you watched man. it before. You poor, I saw this poor, movie man. in fucking theaters. Anyway, you yes, idiot. if you haven't figured it out. I saw I was out. right. I was right why people watched this movie. It was the fucking Your Name hype. I fucking knew it. Yes, it was. Uh, so if anyone hasn't figured out, yes, we are here reviewing Natai's pick for a movie review uh, this month. And that is, I'm going to say the full title. And it's going to be the one and only time in this review I'm going to say the full title. Fireworks? Should we see it from the side or the bottom? That is That's the stupidest said. title I've ever heard in my life. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Should we see it from the side or the bottom? Uh, I'd like to <laughs> fuck this movie from the side and the bottom. Jesus oh, Christ. Damn. The anyway, underage. so before we get into this and absolutely eviscerate this fucking movie, uh, <laughs> uh, let me go over some of the um, <laughs> the introductory bits that I always go over. Mm, so, flattering ones. It, yeah, this is the only, well, I don't know if this is flattering, but it's probably the only thing we'll say positive about this movie going forward. Um, so this was directed by, uh, it was co-directed by Akiyuki Shimbo and Nobuyuki Take, let me try that again, Nobuyuki Takeuchi, um, no it was way. written by, I guess, not just written, but adapted by, uh, Hitoshi One, um, the story is based on a made-for-TV Japanese live-action movie that originally came out in 1993, um, so nice to know that, uh, they're being very topical with this, um, it is produced by the one and only studio Shaft, which I don't think it's it's um, too far out there to say that Natai and I have a, a soft spot for. We are very intimate with Shaft. <laughs> yes. With someone's Shaft. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> you watch out your Shafts, don't you? Mmm, my favorites. <laughs> uh, 
watch our Monogatari <laughs> spoiler cast, please. <laughs> it's better than this shit. <laughs> oh, oh, don't even compare the two, bro. <laughs> this film, this film originally premiered in Japan on August eighteenth, two thousand seventeen, um, in the United Kingdom. A little bit later, on uh, October fifteenth of the same year, G Kids got a hold of the movie and premiered the film in the United States on July third, twenty eighteen, with a wider release on July fourth, twenty eighteen. God, why do you sully our independence day with this movie <laughs> um this, i couldn't find any kind of budgeting information for this movie probably because shaft doesn't want to reveal how much money they fucking wasted making this um <laughs> damn uh i do know that worldwide uh it has made uh, a box office of 26.6 million u.s dollars and it runs for a total of 90 minutes thank All right, christ no. it, it's no. about 95 minutes too long now hold on, before we get going, I just need to, to to explain why I was curious about this fucking movie. I remember back when Your Name was like like ramping up towards its release and people were like very hyped for it, so around the time it came out, this fucking movie released like its first trailer, I think. Mm-hmm. And I told this to Alex right before we started recording, I really believe like most of the hype for this movie, because like, like the, you can look up that fucking trailer in the music video by Dauko, which is great. Like it... It gained a lot of traction because, like, what can I say? The movie is like fucking gorgeous sometimes, and uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, most. Of, I think most of the time it does look really good. But like, the, but the thing is, I honestly think it gained so much traction because of the Your Name hype. People watch that movie and they're like, "Oh my god!" And around like close to that release, like, the, the, like they would start promoting uh, this movie. And I honestly think most of that fucking. Box office because of like the the your name fall up. People are like oh, I want to see more. I need more Japanese fucking movies and like I don't know. I th- just a fucking speculation team fall hat thing. But yeah, so I was just curious because I, really I, like I that will say I, in your defense, Natai, the trailer and tra- uh, trailers because I technically I think the music video they released is kind of supposed to be a trailer for the movie. Um, mm. um, it gives you a false sense that this movie is good. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Yeah, those are like those trailers and that music video again. Like they were like very, very solid. Like and that song by Daoko, the ending song is fantastic. I, I love her music. So like, yeah. and I think that also a lot of my friends back then were like, "Oh yeah, this fucking music video. Ooh, I want to see that movie." It's like, well, not too long ago we made an episode about fucking good OPs for bad shows. This is the same shit, bro. Yeah. It is kind of yeah. Um, so let's actually. You mentioned that the the movie looks good most of the time. So let's get into that. So this was done, of course, by Studio Shaft, which is famous for uh, anime like the Monogatari series, Madoka Magica, uh, things of that nature. Very stylistic, very um, avant garde esque, I guess you would say. And we do um, get some of that stuff in the movie, and we, and we do the definitely end. get some of that. There there are many many trademark Shaft establishing and panning shots, uh, especially while characters are talking. Um, lots of fast cuts to just random shit sometimes. Um, that's very much Akiyuki Shimbo, like, trademark right there. I told In a weird way, way f- while I know it's Shaft that uh, do these cuts, in this movie it kind of felt weird and out of place. I'm not going to lie. I felt oh, weirded it out by a lot of it. Mm, I don't know. I was like, the moment I saw Shaft, I was like, oh, cool. And then it was sort of, like, fit in place. I didn't feel like it, they went over, but like in Monogatari, they fucking use different types of animation. Like, like fuck, they would take like paper and cardboard, and use all that different like really avant-garde shit. This just felt like Monogatari aesthetics, very, very, very light. Like this is basically, like, it, it was almost like Monogatari aesthetics for the masses. I don't know. I, I, even not that. I don't think it's even that avant-garde. I just think it's like very pretty. I just think that sound like the the art style itself, like the character, the character. The, the sort of art style that dictated the character designs felt very similar to shit we'd see in Monogatari. I told you before we start recording, there was a moment like we would focus on the main character, like yawning, opening as well. I was like, damn, I, I that, that shot really reminded me of uh, Monogatari. So, yeah. but but for the most part, again, like I, I do think this movie is very very gorgeous. Most oh, the movie's speak, speak. absolutely gorgeous. Like, there's no yeah. doubt about that. Speaking speaking of of like Monogatari, um, can we talk about how the main female character is literally just Discount Hitagi? <laughs> it's basically Senju Gahara, yeah. It's basically Senju Gahara from the Monogatari series. I mean, hey, she looks. Re- I, I do like her design. She's cute, but yeah, it's basically Senju Gahara all over again. 
It's uh, just it, it's, also, Sinj- it's it's Sinji Kahara with smaller boobs and less <laughs> uh less like de- or not de- uh self uh deprecating humor. I also I do want to shout out the voice actress for because I do feel like her performance was like very strong. I did really mm-hmm. enjoy her performance. We'll get to that in a second. Uh but I'd also want to talk about the CG in this movie because there is uh, a bit um and some of it is like it, it's fine, it's whatever. Um, but some of it is just the choice to use it in certain scenes was absolutely Bruh, baffling. Whenever to me. there's a wide shot of the fucking kids like roller, roller skating or like using their bicycles, it looks rough, dude. It looks no, that looks like it was like a pre-rendering for fuck's sake. There's no, no there's no detail good. in the models. Yeah, there's it does not look good. There's like this one moment near the end of the movie with like. The two like main characters like they ride this like train cart and it's a it's a, like a zoom out shot of like looking at the cart from the outside and you see the silhouettes of the characters inside so you'd say okay the silhouettes so it allowed the animation to be a bit a bit smoother uh, it's still CG models and then you notice it. it stands out like a sore thumb it's yeah. kind of it's like, not I, yeah it's not something you just miss it's very it's obvious there. when they do it. And yeah. honestly, that feels like a shame. It wasn't. It didn't blend in as well. It it genuinely feels like some of the CG in this movie is like unfinished pre-renderings, not actual like finished CG designs. Now, I will say, going into the movie, I I one hundred percent knowing that there was going to be scenes, many scenes involving fireworks. I thought, okay, I ha- I one hundred percent expect all the fireworks to be CG, and they were. And actually, I will say those uses of uh C- the uses of good. fireworks as really CG good. actually works. Yeah. Um. But no, but, the, yeah. the the choice to, to make some of the building CG in shots where the camera is standing still, it's like, why? Why would you just draw the building? No, no, no actually, with the, like, the structures, also, I, don't, I don't have any issue with it. But it's mainly the fucking character animation in the CG models when they like ride bicycles. Or, it does not look good at all. And it's like, also, again, toward the it end of the movie, the, and... toward the end of the movie, the CG train is rough. <laughs> It's not great, but but yeah, it's a real shame because like the fucking the the moment the movie starts, like there's a lot of like background shots that establish like this this like town and the ha- different houses and whatnot. And they look amazing. Like the background art is like spectacular in this movie. The aesthetic choice in this uh, movie is really nice, honestly. Yeah, I, I will say like aesthetically, that I think they nail that kind of small town Japanese look really well. Um, yeah. So, uh, you mentioned the, the voice acting, so we, we can go on to, to that right now. Um, so, uh, this the score for this movie <clears throat> was composed by uh, our boy, Satoru Kosaki, who, if you've, been watching, if you've been watching our, um, our Monogatari spoiler cast, you, this name is very familiar to you. He's done uh, a lot of music work for that series. And I also think for Beastars. That too. Um, mm. I think it definitely comes through, because I think if there is one, like, like, almost universal positive in this movie it's the music it's really good yeah i um, like the soundtrack quite a lot I, I can't say there's any like particular piece that stood out besides the um the song that the main girl sings yeah also there's like this main theme that they sort of use in the ending song of the whole in the tournament like it, it incorporates itself also and it works really well uh mm. I, it's a it's not one of my favorite soundtracks by uh kosaki but it is like it, it's it's good he it does good shit I really and like actually it. i will say that theme you're talking about reminds me a lot of that kind of theme that he created for um um ononoki in mm. super monogatari yeah yeah i know what you're talking about yeah alex it's natai this movie could have gone without her randomly singing out of nowhere yeah, it's I, a and, musical you know, now. Go, going back, going back to the like, the animation and stuff, like it just she starts singing and just it randomly becomes a fucking like a Disney musical with bad CG. <laughs> that was, was really so that was a taken strange choice out of the movie. I was just, what the fuck is going on? That, yeah, That's to literally be fair. my reaction. I was just like, what the? Hell? It sounded good. I enjoyed the visuals. I was just so very confused. 
Like, to be, yeah, to be fair, the song is good. It has no place where it is in the movie, though. I don't know. It's like, oh, maybe I want to be an idol. Let's break into song. This is a musical now. It's like Which, this would have been good. Mm -hmm. This this would have been fine if, like, the actual movie up to this point had also been a musical. It, it is not. <laughs> or even given some sort of hint of her wishes mm. to do something like that. Yeah, even. like... Like Nothing. if you if you heard her in the beginning of the movie like singing or even just humming some tunes and like maybe I don't know reading some kind of idol magazine Bro, or something. Bro, you get no characterization for her. Like for her, for display. none of the characters. Like all of the characters are established to having like a singular character trait, and that's it. They don't grow. They don't develop. It's just that's it. <laughs> Shout outs to the teacher character. She's my favorite. Oh, Listen, she's, she's uh, she's you nice. just like it because it's a Jacob. Come on, <laughs> bro. I bur I will like 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 quit quit sidebar. I actually burst out laughing the moment when they go near the end of the movie. There's like a comment on her and like her boyfriend or whatever. Actually, that was like genuinely funny. But yeah, like also uh, in in the Japanese dub, voiced by Kana Hanazawa. Oh, that makes so much sense now. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I need, oh, let me breathe for a sec. Ooh. Also, I like how, so Yuki Kaji is in this in, in this uh, Japanese dub as well, and they give him the smallest fucking, like, voiced role they could. <laughs> what a waste of I talent. don't understand that. I really He's, don't. He, pl he plays the, uh, the nerdy glasses boy with the bowl cut. Bruh, I was like, so again, Netflix is a fucking 10 out of 10 crediting, because like, what the fuck? So like, so it's starring Yuki Kaji, I'm like, oh, okay, then the main character starts speaking, like, that's not Yuki Kaji, what the fuck? And then it's like, 10 minutes ago, oh, that's Yuki Kaji. Yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> the fucking little boy that no one likes. <laughs> so, I do want to point out, originally when I saw this in theaters, I did see the Japanese dub, um, and I hated it then. Uh, I didn't hate the dub. I mean, the dub is it, it's whatever. But I decided, you know, for this review, I've never seen the English dub. What the fuck? I'm go I'm going to watch the entire movie in English. Something I rarely do with anime these days. And so I was did it go? I was pleasantly surprised. Like, despite the movie, like the story of the movie being shit, the voice acting performances of the English dub uh, voice actors is actually r really good. Um, they all sound like the ages they're supposed to be. It doesn't sound like a you know a fifty year old man trying to make his make his voice sound high. I oh, I was really tempted to, to switch to I was very tempted to switch to the dub because the subtitles were as Netflix tend to do. They were literally just like the dub script and not like a translation of the Japanese, which like very it was very noticeable. I really. Got irritated by the subs, but I also shout out to it. my anime list for not actually having the English dub voice actors listed. Hey, what are, what's English, dude? In my anime, <laughs> but, but the anime is from Japan, dude. What do you mean there's English dub? I'd love to tell you who these people are, but I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I could probably look it up on IMDb, but eh, whatever. I, did, I just want to give a you know, quick shout out because the uh, the people that they did get to uh, do the voices did actually a really good job, even given the shitty material they were given to work with. They all sound they like the ages they are. Um, to, uh, huge credit to the woman who um, did main. I, I keep I don't even know her name because I don't care. Nazuna, the main girl. Nazuna. Um, Nazuna yeah. Actually, sounds like. Um, uh, Suzu Hirose, who is her Japanese voice actress, um, kind of has the same like voice cadence and like the the intonation of her voice, and has a very similar singing voice. So I was about to ask, did they actually like dub the song as well? Yes, they did. It... Okay, uh, that's cool. they the only one they didn't dub was the song that plays in the end credits. Nah, that's fine. Which is fine, but yes, they actually took the 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 opportunity to not only uh, translate the song because it is a translation, but they made it rhyme and still say the same thing. Hmm, that's really so. There cool. was actually some thought and care that went into this dub. It's a shame that it's for a shitty movie. Man, man, I'm getting flashbacks to that Bill uh, movie. <laughs> But I was actually surprised because that was a scene where I was kind of flipping back and forth between the English and the Japanese. Because I'm like, I, I know that in the original, obviously, the song was in Japanese. But I was like, did they translate this? Yeah, they did. And it's actually, they're saying pretty much the same thing. Um, they're changing it around a little bit. But, like, the, the, the lyrics of the song are relatively the same. They just f found a way to make it rhyme in English. I'm yeah, actually that's, really that's amazed really cool. by that. But it's um, cool to hear. Yeah, again, it's it's a small bit of praise that I can give this movie. Um, 
And also the the sound design is it, it it's whatever. It's not intrusive. I, I felt like it was just it was okay for what it was. Um, the uh, the fireworks actually sound like fireworks. They don't sound like someone in a room just popping off firecrackers. No, like fireworks. What the fuck? No, I I have I have heard jab, like anime where there are fireworks in it, and it just sounds like someone in a room popping off a firecracker. <laughs> yeah, no, I have to agree with Alex. Like they. I've heard a lot of really shitty firework, quote unquote, and they they actually it sounds good this time. Yeah, I do want to say, and maybe I'm the only one who feels like that, but the main character's voice actor was not great. This and is the first are we, time. Are we talking about in the, in the Japanese? Sub. I haven't watched the dub, uh, okay. but in the sub, so I don't know why, but it it felt like it was like sleeping through this like entire movie. I mean, I, I would don't be if understand I were a voice why. actor on it. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe you know. Like, did you like get an impression from me as well? I'm curious too, because it Honest? sort of it stuck out to me. It's like something didn't feel right about that performance. I don't know why. No, I can see where you're coming from. I I feel like I fucking hated that character because he was just such a awkward, brain dead teenage boy. Maybe it's because of that. Maybe they did get his uh, voice right. I, I will say in the. In, in the- in the English dub, whoever whoever the uh, the voice actor was for for that char- the main male character, um, did a really good job because he he made it sound like it was a, a boy who was in the midst of puberty. So every so often his voice would go like that. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? There is one moment that like I did really enjoy where like his voice sort of cracks when very, he went into the it, hospital. It, yeah, yeah, it is, that's great. I did really like that, but I don't know something about aside from that, it felt kind of off. I. It felt, it just felt like he was just not like, like he was sleeping through it. I don't know. It, it was very, very weird. All right. Well, let's move on to the story for whatever that's worth. What story? Um, the, the only thing I've written down, the only thing we have in our show notes doc here is what even is this story? And dude, that is dude, a great I'm question gonna, because I'm just going to fucking, I don't fucking know. I just going to make this fucking claim. This movie is like I think the de- like like the main issue with this movie is this fucking script sucks ass. Like you got fucking Akiyuki Shoma directing a movie and it's still so fucking like basic and like underwhelming. Like this like uh, uh, so they're like uh so they This they is also about- I, I want to point out that this is this is obviously it's Studio Shaft and it's Akiyuki Shimbo coming back after doing um Akisu Monogatari. Um which was for, by many people not I mean, mostly Monogatari fans. It's like the second peak of Monogatari. I don't know, man. It's like, wait, was it Shinbo directed Kizu? I don't think he was the guy who directed it. Maybe he was like a supervisor, but well, let me let me rephrase. It was after Shaft had come back from from Kizu Monogatari. All right, okay. Uh, I think he but... had. I think he, I, he didn't direct it, but I think he had some kind of an advisory role. Oh yeah, he did direct. Okay, my he directed with uh, Tatsuo Ishii. My bad. But anyway. Oh okay. I, I okay. feel I feel like he ha- he took a back seat to that though. My point is, it's like, like, and the directing is great. I do like a lot of the shots they use and how they use the camera in certain ways. Like when you they zoom into that sort of like fucking MacGuffin ball thing, like it 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 looks cool. I do like the use of like it's like oh if because like for some reason it's like very like obsessed with. Actually, I won't go into it. Which, but like, which, which, for reference, the the name of the town they're in, Moshimo, that literally means "if" in Japanese. It's so cool. Oh, wow. no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 definitely, this movie has like this quote unquote sci fi side to it, and on surface level, like, I I do like it, but it's not even. It's almost like it doesn't come in. It, it's not really satisfying because at the end of the day, like at the end of the movie, it's like it doesn't go anywhere. Can I ask you something? It, it, the MacGuffin, the little ball that I helps you forget your regrets or whatever the fuck it is. Um, it, when that's introduced and you see what it is for the first time, I'm like, okay, so I guess we're just gonna try and rip off uh, Makoto Shinkai's shtick now. <laughs> uh, no, not really, because this is different. Uh, they like. I, I don't want to go into spoils because it's it's different. It's not the same thing. I don't know. I I got that vibe though. Like this whole like sci-fi slash fantasy esque thing with with teenagers. Do we want to get a, a, a give a, a quick like 
uh, summary of like what the premise of the movie yeah, is. Yeah, the, the premise of the movie is like it takes place in this like small-ish, um, I guess, oceanside town in Japan. Um, and there's a fireworks festival about to go off and uh, there's a character that's like, hey, I, I need someone to go with because my parents are, 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 well, my mom is kind of a slut and she's got her 18th fucking husband in five years and that's it. That's the whole movie. But, like, ugh, it's weird. So, like, the, the whole premise of is there is, like, a whole, like, this main character comes across this, like, uh, this, uh, uh, this girl who is in his, in, his, is in his high school, right? And it's, like, there's a thing where, like, obviously stuff is going on in a house and she's, like, trying to find a way to maybe escape. But, and then, like, you have that moment in every movie where they like sort of like set up sort of themes of the movie, right? In the mm. introduction, where they're like trying to to allude to the themes of the movie and like what they're going for. Those fucking kids won't shut the fuck up about whether fireworks are flat or round. And in every which is where the title comes from. <laughs> in any other movie, you would mention it twice, maybe at the beginning of the movie. You just put it out there. It's like, oh, maybe that's the sort of like. But they just wouldn't shut the fuck out. I get it. Up about I, I it for get the that, rest of the movie. I get that this times. is. I get that this is kind of a silly, like, who cares kind of argument that young kids can have. I, I get that, but like, but to frame an entire movie, ninety minute long movie around this, fuck off. No, but when you're fucking writing a script for a movie, you don't sh- don't mention it all the time. It's just so redundant and exhausting. It's like, who gives a shit? It's like, damn. Like that's um, like. Ugh, Man, maybe so... maybe you should tell that to Ryan Johnson. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. About Star Wars with you. We're not talking. This is not Star Wars. Podcast. We're not doing this, Alex. No, we're not. We're not. But anyway, it's like that's one thing. Like so again, the, this fucking script. I don't know who gave a pass on it. And then the other thing. So you're trying to establish like the movie. Obviously, is going towards like a fucking connection between these two main characters, and it's based on what exactly. Nothing, like, uh, nothing in this movie is fucking earned. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I have no clue. Like, so these characters, like, like midway through the movie, are, like, so attached to each other. It's like, why? You haven't talked to each other as far as I can tell. Like, there's no there's no moment in the movie where at the beginning that establishes their connection to each other, if there's any relationship between the two. There, there, so, there, there is a point in the movie, and I feel like the reason there was, like, a close-up shot of this is why it's in the movie. There is a part where main character boy is looking at like what looks to be like a, a yearbook or something from school or or some kind some kind of thing that the school put together with right, pictures right. with pictures of a bunch of the kids from the school and he's looking at it and he sees a picture of him with main character girl and I'm I'm assuming that's supposed to inform us the audience hey this is like they're not really being introduced for the first time in this film like but- they they know of each other but then he has zero reaction to it. He just looks at it. It's like, oh, I guess. But it's like, that doesn't... And that's also like three quarters away of the way into the movie. Yeah. Oh, like, yo, holy for sure. fucking shit. It's handled incredibly bad. Like, But I feel like that's why it was put in. It's just supposed to say, hey, you might be wondering why this is going on the way it is. And they keep talking again, to each other as if they like have known each other for a while. Oh, this is why. Don't worry about it. Which, again, it. feels like a fucking first draft type of mistake. Like, who, who fucking... Looked at it. Good. Actually, I'm thinking about what, this movie, the this more I'm not like hating be, it. I, I think this could be in the movie, but it should be way earlier in the movie. Should it should it be have? like right after, right after the main girl like asks him, "Hey, you want to go see the fireworks?" Uh, that's what that you should and cut even to this that oh, afterwards. Me. You should cut to this afterwards, just establishing, "Hey, this isn't the first time." Like they're talking to each other this way because they they may not know each other as friends, but they know of each other. And even that, like, the main MacGuffin thing kicks in, like, to the movie, like, 35, 40 minutes into the movie. And again, the movie is only 90 minutes long. And it doesn't feel like anything happened till that point. Very little, like, because it just... Ugh, I, it's so I, fucking I'd like weird. To, I'd like to point out, the original made-for-TV live-action movie that this story is based on is only 42 and a half minutes long. And so... That's and this so is a 90-minute long movie... <laughs> There's like They've 50 really extra minutes of out. nothing of substantial. So it weird. does. It does seem like it, you know it, it is 100% dragged out. You're right, and it, it feels like there's lots of shots um, 
that that kind of just artificially inflate the runtime. Just like, well, we got to figure out something to get this to feature. Bro, the fucking flashbacks. The fucking, like, they would use the flashback of him talking to her on the uh, train platform. And I was like, what, 10 minutes ago? It's like, come on. It was this is not Naruto. Lazy. <laughs> Straight up. That's um, that's literally all and it again, was. That's extreme shit, laziness. Yeah. It is. It, it, again, it's, definitely... like, it's anime. This shit happens. But it doesn't feel justified at all. It is also worth mentioning that um, the the dude that wrote this, or I guess you would say adapted this, based on the old movie, um, Hitoshi One, One is uh, this is the only anime he's ever written. Um, now, he does have a history of writing and directing live action um, uh, television shows and, and movies uh, in Japan, but and some of them are uh, adaptations of anime and manga. Um, but this is the only anime he's ever written for, at least so far. I don't know if I don't know if the um, his uh, inexperience with anime maybe contributed to why the I don't know. script is bad. It's it's I don't know, but I honestly think the like the like the big gigantic what the fuck in this movie is because of the script. This script is not good. At all. What the and fuck? The no, fucking... it's like a fuck you to the people watching it. <laughs> and then you get to the end of the movie, it's like, it's so fucking unsatisfying. It's like, I guess I, I get what you're trying to do, but it's not satisfying at all. It's just like, okay. I feel like this would, have, this would have been better either as a, a short, uh, like a short film. Like maybe a 30 OVA. to 40 minute long short film where you're literally just seeing the... Um, uh, the results of this, the main character's regret, because that's, uh, despite the awkward clumsiness, like the the theme, the major theme of the movie is about regrets. Um, it's a big what if thing that Japan loves doing all the time, and again, I think like there's a lot of potential in that, but it's so just it's, it's just wasted because there's the no- execution of it is subpar. Yes, yeah. or I would say if you really want to go full in on this idea, give all of the characters time to get developed and maybe show multiple characters different regrets. Like, string this out into, like, a 10 to 12 episode series. No, I, I like don't even think good. so. I think, I, I disagree. I think this can be accomplished with a feature-length movie, but it's like, it's just like the fucking time is utilized so poorly. Oh, it is, 100%. I don't know, so, Thank you, Natai, for choosing this. You're welcome. As you, <laughs> as as we say, we're talking about too many good movies. It was time to fucking muddy the waters. With well, we've done and poop. we've done two in a row. So um, before we uh, get out of here, obviously we got to uh, say what we give this out of ten. So I'm just gonna go out and get the cats out of the bag for me. Just like Bell, I give this a four out of ten. Um, I feel like there there are some good aspects. The the music is pretty good, and by and large, the animation is pretty good. There, although there is some baffling use of cg here and there um but there's just very little to like about this movie the story is completely forgettable as are most of the characters um in fact i would say all of the characters are completely forgettable so yeah it's not even average for me it's just bad mm. Nitai? yeah it's a five uh i was like midway through the way i was like mm, maybe it's like not that bad like there's maybe something that i do like about it. but by the end of the way i was like yeah it's just five in like a few months I'll forget about it. It's just really, really forgettable. Uh, and it's just like a, a wasted opportunity to do something really cool. Considering you had such a fucking like like top of their game directors and animators and music and like just the entire crew is doing great shit except for this fucking script, which nothing can save. Uh, it's not, it didn't even angry, anger me. It's just like, it's kind of, I forget about it in a few weeks. Probably. Yeah, it didn't, it, I mean, it was disappointing, but it, was, it didn't make me angry like Bell did. Yeah, because it's just Bell very unsatisfying. It up, Bell sets itself up to be like this really nice, I won't say epic, but like um, heartfelt story. And it just shits the bed where this Grand just made me story, go yeah. like, ugh, bleh. I feel dirty. <laughs> go watch uh, yourself. Shinoda, what do you give this out of 10? Fireworks go boom. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, it's it's a four out of ten. Like, even like two two weeks after, what I'm gonna remember about this movie is I fucking hated it. That they're like, I'm not yeah. gonna remember the characters. I'm not gonna remember the music. I'm gonna. I might remember the animation was like somewhat decent, but like that's it. 
I'm, I'm not going to remember this movie. I'm not going to care for it. If anyone even asks me about it, I'm going to tell them, no, just don't. Don't waste your time. It's not worth it. Yeah. I Do it for the teacher. Do it for a teacher character. No, no. <laughs> she, I like her, but she's not worth it. None of them was. D. She was so cute, e though. F. G. H. I. God. No, what was again, that by scene? the end, when that like was someone so was stupid. like. stupid. That was so dumb. But then, <laughs> I, by the end of the movie, when like someone was like, oh, so you are dating her? You are dating. I was like actually bursting out laughing. That was very funny. I, I did. I will say one scene that did. There's literally one time in this movie I did laugh. It was that scene where the guys, the the guy that she's dating, is see, sees her in the yukata, and he's like, "So your boobs are actually big. It's just the yukata that's making it look small, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so fucking. And then stupid. he just slaps him. <laughs> so fucking dumb. All right, so that's uh, that's fireworks. Um, fucking disaster. Uh, Go watch some real fireworks that'll be a better use yeah, of go, yeah go watch actual fireworks it's far more exciting than this movie better <laughs> and there's actual like chance of death um oh anyway so the next movie review which is actually my choice this time um i think i'm going to set in motion something that may come to fruition a lot later so i have decided that i'm going to watch or we are going to watch and review um, the very first Evangelion rebuild movie. Evangelion 1.0, you are not alone. Yes, you are uh, alone, Let's fucking go. <laughs> Jesus, I, um, could you not die? Fuck. Wow, exactly. <laughs> uh, after that abuse. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen going forth forward. We still need to talk about it, but something we've talked about is maybe doing all four of the rebuild movies as reviews, and then uh, finishing it off with an actual like uh, spoiler cast of the original Evangelion uh, series from the nineties. Um, we'll have to see what happens. Um, obviously, if that happens, it's not gonna be until probably mid next year. Uh, when that comes to pass, but uh, yeah. So our next movie review will be Evangelion 1.0, You Are Not Alone, uh, if anyone wants to uh, watch along with us. Um, uh, does anyone have any last thoughts to say about fireworks before I uh, literally shoot this off in a rocket myself? What's what, what's fireworks? What are we talking about? Madoka Magica. Oh, oh right, yeah. that, that was fun. <laughs> that was a good show. Yeah, I like that anime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was quite good. Man, it's it's a shame there's not a scene in Monogatari where they're actually watching fireworks. <laughs> anyway, um, hmm. <laughs> anyway, thank you all out there for dropping in to listen to us. Check the description below to find links to Anime Club, After Dark on Twitch, on social media, and on Discord. Check out our merch store. Any purchases you make there do really help us out. With that, I've been your host Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night. Bye bye. Uh, and cut. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Just fucking no emotion and cut. Come on.